they shot a rocket at our van and it hit us. There's so much going on that isn't gonna be highlighted in the news. Like the boy, the boy. You need to, you need to, you need to came. In Ukraine. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Victoria. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about living radically for Christ, equipping you to live radically for Christ, stirring in your heart what that looks like, and just kind of a day-to-day -day what my life looks like in full-time ministry. So today we have a special guest with us, a dear friend of mine, Hello. Misha. <laughs> and I'm excited to have Misha here with us today. As some of you know, I went to Ukraine at the very beginning of the war back in March, and I helped start off what we were doing, ministering at the border, equipping people for evangelism, and we just saw people, I mean, radically touched by the Lord. Thousands giving their life to Christ, open doors everywhere. They were so hungry for the gospel. And so I stayed about two weeks, and right after I left, Micheline came, <laughs> and she's now been there for nine months. <laughs> so <laughs> some don't leave. <laughs> she just fell in love with the country. So I want you guys to hear just a bit of her story, how that happened, and what God's been doing in Ukraine, because there's so much going on that isn't going to be highlighted in the news. Like the way that the gospel is going forth in this hour, the people who are giving their lives to Jesus, the testimonies of miracles that are taking place over there. I mean, it's really powerful what God is doing in the midst of war. And so I wanted you guys to hear from somebody who has boots on the ground, kind of what it has been like in Ukraine in war zones. So. Misha, say hi. Yes, hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to start this off and I'm just going to ask you just some questions, okay? And then sure. you can answer. But, um, okay, so tell us your journey to Ukraine because you weren't initially planning on going. Made it in Ukraine. <laughs> Yeah, so I had no plans actually to go to Ukraine. I found out that the war had started and I was sad about it, but really there was just so much going on in my personal life that mm -hmm. I didn't, wasn't able to make the connection with it at the time. A few days later, I was scrolling through Facebook and I actually came upon this video and when I saw the destruction and when I saw the helplessness of the people there, it really broke my heart and moved me. And I said, Lord, will you send me? Can I go? So then you went to Ukraine and you started off at the border kind of like I did, but then the Lord was stirring in your heart to go deeper, right? Right, right. Yeah, really from the beginning, I felt very strongly that I wanted to go help the people in the war zones and rescue them and really bring practical help along with ministering the gospel. And I didn't know exactly how that would work out because the only connection I knew there was working at the border where the refugees were leaving, exiting into Poland. But God had a plan and he eventually led me to go in deeper and worked it all out. So when you go, when you say go in deeper, where exactly did you guys go? <laughs> well, um, first we went to East Ukraine, where we began to set up a base, and then we started to go all over the country to the east, like really far where. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. That's too long. Okay, okay. Retake. <clears throat> Okay, short, short, okay. Um, so we actually went into the war zones, into where it's dangerous, where people need to be rescued, they need to be evacuated, um, and where people are hiding underground away from the fighting.
first usually we had word that people were there and they wanted to be evacuated and so then we went in we would come to those people we'd bring food for the rest because not everybody wants to leave in fact many people are afraid to evacuate because of what can happen on the way out but we would bring food water to the people who don't have any and then we would evacuate the people and usually when we got there there would be more and more people who would have to put on a list where we could make enough trips to go back and get them. What was it like sharing the gospel in those areas? Because I know there's a lot of humanitarian aid going, but what you were doing was a bit different because yes. it wasn't just humanitarian aid. Right. Like you have more of a focus on making sure these people hear the gospel. Exactly, yes. Every time we go, we share the gospel and people are so open to receive Jesus like really like I've never seen because when you're in the face of death, when you're looking, when you're staring into eternity, it's usually the time where people question, is there a God? Can I know him? And how can I be right with him? I, Lord, that you don't let anything happen to them in Jesus' name, that you protect them in the name of Jesus, complete protection in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord. <laughs> Mm -hmm. What's going to happen after I die? Exactly. It becomes very real in exactly. those moments. Yes. And then were you guys able to pass out Bibles? Oh, yes. Yes, we passed out Bibles. We also passed out flyers just explaining how what Jesus accomplished on the cross and how we just can come to him. But people would sometimes immediately open the Bibles, actually, yeah. and start reading. And they would just stand there and read the word of God like wow. it was medicine to their souls. Because well, it is. Yes. I mean, it, it really is. It's our daily bread and yeah, yes, exactly. our, it's our, it's everything. The exactly. word of God is everything. So I know you guys went and you had some opportunity, you had a lot of opportunities to share with soldiers. Yes. So tell us about um, one of your encounters, like getting to share with the soldiers and why that was so important to you. Yes, so really God put it on our hearts to share with the soldiers because they're going to the front lines and the reality is many of them will die. And so God, he actually opened the door for us to go into military bases and for us to bring supplies, for us to bring food and things that they really needed at the time. And of course, while we did that, we were able to um, gather them all and share the gospel with them and we saw so many of them coming to the Lord and so ready to receive the gospel because they knew they needed God. There was this one time in particular where God really opened the door for us to come to a military base where there was 400 soldiers mm -hmm. and we had to be there at a particular time and it's actually very important that you get there on time because they're military but our team was running late and we still had to get the supplies and there was so much that we had to prepare for and we didn't even have a translator at the time. And so we're running late. We were able to load the supplies and the vans in a crazy amount of time, like so small we had to do this, but God, he totally did a miracle with the time. And as we were on the way, you know, we realized the main thing we were lacking was a translator. And how are we going to be able to share the gospel? Because not many people in Ukraine speak English. And while we were on the way there, my friend, she prayed and she said, Lord, I just pray that you will prepare someone who will be able to translate and who will be willing to share the gospel for us. And so she prayed that prayer. We pulled up to the military base and we began to unload the cars. And as we unloaded the cars this soldier came up and immediately he started speaking English and we said oh wow you speak English and he said yeah I do he said in fact if you need a translator I could translate for you and we just looked at each other and we said oh, wow and we said listen we prayed for this because we don't have a translator mm -hmm. and he said you know when I woke up this morning something told me that I would be speaking English today Wow. And so God completely answered that prayer. He prepared someone for us who was able to translate the gospel to the whole battalion. And we saw at least half of them pray out loud with us to receive Jesus, to put their trust in him. And 
It was so powerful, such a beautiful moment. And the best thing is, is that we know that all who prayed with us are in heaven or will be in heaven. And the sad thing is, is that many of them have passed away, but we know now where they are because they put their trust in Jesus. So then, do you want to tell the story about the van? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. These, these stories are really wild because it's like God just opened up door after door <laughs> for them to go in and to share the gospel. And I mean, I don't know what you guys know about military bases, but they're really locked down. Yeah. Like it's not like you, it's not normal to be able to just get onto a military base and, <laughs> and share the gospel. But that's the thing is there's been so many, we were talking about this the other day. There's been so many people who are so caught up in the politics of this war yes. that they're actually missing like the whole focus of what mm -hmm. our attention needs to be on in the middle of this war, because our war is not Russia versus Ukraine. Our war is light versus darkness. It's yeah. against spirits and principalities. Mm -hmm. And those spirits and principalities are raging against this age. And every day there are people who are perishing because they don't know Jesus. And it's like eternity is at hand. Like seriously, eternity is at hand. Yes. And people are being faced with eternity every day. And we cannot be complacent against the matters of eternity. Amen. And I feel like it's even such a work of the enemy to get our minds off of eternal matters and put it on politics and one, and going down the rabbit trail of what's the corruption in this war. Like honestly, it doesn't really matter because souls need to be saved. The yes. gospel needs to go forth. The word of God will prevail. And God is clearly opening up doors so that his people can hear the gospel moments before they die in some cases. So I just, it's important to me to get these testimonies out. And this channel is one of the ways I feel like we can get word out. So if you're watching, if you've even made it this far, like please share this with people because these are testimonies that most of the time we we will never hear about you know there's like a few people who are on the ground doing what what Micheline is doing and what the team there is doing and most of America most of the states most of Europe and other countries even like the Christian church don't really know what's going on as far as taking the gospel into war zones so Micheline tell us a little bit about like in a summary what you've been able to do in your nine months Yes, so we've been able to do a lot, but something God had really put in my heart was being able to rescue people and take them out of the fighting. And God connected me with these locals who are mighty men of God and who had already been doing this, but they had some complications, including they didn't have the vehicles anymore to continue. And when God connected us, the organization I was working with was able to supply us the vehicles so that we could go together. And so we just began to go into the war zones and to rescue people. We evacuated hundreds of people. We were able to go into many shelters, bring food and water and preach the gospel to people who needed it the most. We actually have a refugee center in, the, in our base city and we've been able to disciple many of them as well. And so God was really doing a lot. He was showing us exactly where to go, showing us where the people need the most help. But we actually faced something that pretty much stopped what we were doing for the meantime. And that is our van got bombed. What? Oh, soldati, soldati, go, 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 go. They're saying, Jesus, Jesus. And so one morning we were on the way to a city and we were going down a road where it was, everything had been bombed from the night before, but we kept going because we knew these people in this city needed food. And on the way there, we're driving down this road and we see uh, all these landmines in the middle of the road and so we realize okay we can't go this way so we're turning around and as we're turning around we begin driving up the street um, it was like five in the morning so the street uh, so the sun started to come out and you could see the street 
and we're realizing there is um, just so much debris on the road and so my driver's driving really slow and then all of a sudden he comes to a stop and when he stops the car I look out the window and I see soldiers and they're saying go 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 and so I turn to my driver and I say hey there's soldiers there they're saying go we need to go and before I could even finish they shot a rocket at our van and it hit us and so immediately we were able to run out of the van and we ran towards the soldiers. They took us with them in their trenches and we continued to be attacked. And in between the bombs being shot at us, we just ran from trench to trench until we were able to get far enough away and they could send a car to evacuate us. What? What? Oh, soldati, soldati, go, 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 go. They're saying, oh, Jesus, Jesus. Быстро, 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 сюда. Быстро сюда. Быстро сюда. Вы что вы делаете? Мы людей Тихо, 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 сядь. Сядь, закрыйся, сядь. <laughs> so that was the van that they had been using for evacuations to take the gospel into the war zones and they were able to do that because it was a bulletproof van right which the bulletproof van and the protection of god is the only way that you guys survive that like it's really <laughs> it's really a miracle yes. that there's three of them in the van at the time and everybody survived it is such a miracle because uh, we went later to the head military in that area and they said actually it would be impossible for us to have escaped that day. They said because their whole unit of soldiers died on the road that same morning that we were there. Wow. And it was a miracle because with us, the ones who escaped, nobody died. Wow. Winter's already started in Ukraine so now it's really imperative and it's kind of like a time crunch to be able to get to the front lines with supplies and other means like right now Ukraine a lot of Ukraine is without power yes in the middle of winter so that means no heat no electricity no running water and so they're really they really need the gospel in this hour because many probably won't make it through the winter so if you're watching this and you feel like God's stirring in your heart to do more or to be a part of taking the gospel as well as practical needs into Ukraine and you would like to donate, all of the links to donate will be below. And you can also visit breathelifeinternational.org, which is my ministry website. And there will be ways to give on there as well. But we would love your support because we yes. cannot do this alone. Micheline can't do this alone. No, this is not a one person task that the Lord has assigned. This is a task for the body of Christ. I believe that people watching this, like God's gonna really stir in your heart to be a part of what we're doing. And stay tuned on this channel because we'll have more updates for Ukraine, what's going on when we get the van, all everything. We're gonna really keep you guys involved and in the loop and so you can see what your funds are going towards. And so there's actually footage that you have from Ukraine, right? Yes, a lot. <laughs> a lot, and even from the bombing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I mean, not many people are willing to go into the war zones. Not many people are willing to go to the front lines, let alone the soldiers who are have to, but volunteers who are just serving the Lord in that way. And so if people like Micheline are willing to go, then I think people like us need to be able to send. And she gave her yes to God, and I think we can do the same in whatever way he's asking us. So we are really just expectant for what God's going to do in 2023 in yes. Ukraine. Micheline's back in the States, but just for a couple more days, actually. A week! You leave a week from today? Yes, a week oh from today. Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, so she came home for a quick visit, but she goes back in one week from when this video is filmed. So by the time you're watching it, she's back in Ukraine already. So <laughs> please pray for her and the team um, for protection and for the will of God to prevail and to go forth and no hindrances. 
um, than for strategy because in the middle of winter you definitely need divine strategy from the Lord and there's always a strategy and so we believe that God's going to give it to them and yeah is there anything else you want to yeah I just want to say thank you to whoever's watched this whoever's praying, whoever's supporting, thank you so much that really this can't be done without you, that we're together in this. It's mm -hmm. not just some of us going or some of us praying, but it works together and we need each other. We are connected, we are a body, and without yeah. one part, this none of this could work. So. Yeah, amen. But we love you guys. Let's pray. Let's. Can you pray for the people watching? Yeah, we'll absolutely. I head out. Yes, Lord, I thank you for whoever is on the other side of the screen, Lord. I thank you that you see them, you know the plans that you have for them, that they're yes. good plans to prosper them, to give them a hope and a future. Lord, I bless them, bless them in every area of their life. Give them faith for these end times, Lord, that they would be your hands and feet, Jesus, that they would be equipped to go into all the world, to share your gospel, to help the helpless, to be a light in the darkness, Lord. I thank you, I ask that you Bless them in any desire of their heart to support and uh, any desire of their heart even to go if this is what you're calling them to. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, guys, go ahead and please share this. Uh, subscribe to this channel. Like, like the video. It helps us with the algorithm on YouTube to be able to show it to more people. The more likes and interaction we get on each video, the more YouTube will suggest this video and this channel to other people. So it helps us in getting the gospel out. It helps us in getting just things like this out to people. So your support, even in just subscribing and liking this video actually helps a ton. So we love you guys and we will see you soon. Okay, I want to show you guys what I'm giving Micheline to to take to Ukraine. <laughs> dun dun dun. A GoPro. <laughs> I need one of these so bad. Show them your phone. She's been taking footage. <laughs> it's huge. And it's not it's, an iPhone. No. What it's is not. it? It's a Motorola. Yeah. So we're gonna upgrade her. <laughs> We need the upgrade. The GoPro. <laughs> did you buy the thing to put it on your yeah. bulletproof? You did? Yeah. Okay, good. So she's going to have a thing to put on her bulletproof vest. <laughs> <laughs> so I can take everyone with me into the war zones. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, though. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. <laughs>